Okay, good morning guys and welcome to our last presentation on Huckleberry Finn. Um, we are going to be looking at the Phelps adventure and how the story is actually a Bildungsroman or a coming of age story. So I hope you have enjoyed reading uh, Huckleberry Finn and this is going to be um, our little finale. So I'm just going to explain to you really quickly kind of the ending and go over um, what's important and kind of what you need to know to help you with your essay test on Friday. So the Phelps adventure basically includes the Duke and the Dolphin eventually betraying Huck and, and Jim by selling Jim off to a man named Silas Phelps. Um, so that proves to us again that the Duke and the King are really um, cons and all they care about is money. Uh, having already decided to help Jim, even if it means that Huck is going to hell, Huck sets off to find the Phelps farm with only Providence to guide him. On the way, he is concerned by a pack of dogs who turn out to belong to Sally Phelps. And this is very ironic because it hap she happens to be Tom Sawyer's aunt. So Sally confuses Huck for her nephew, Tom, who she hasn't seen in a really long time. So she doesn't remember what he looks like. So Huck pret uh, pretends to be Tom. He tells his aunt that he's late because there was an explosion about a steamboat. And he says that a black man was killed. And Sally comments uh, that he was lucky that he escaped the explosion. So Huck goes down to the docks to fetch his luggage. But he is actually going to, in case the real Tom Sawyer shows up. At first, Tom calls Huck a ghost, thinking he was dead. But he quickly agrees to help free Jim. Huck says, Tom Sawyer feel considerable in my estimation for agreeing so quickly to help. Now, you have to watch Tom because his motives for actually helping Huck are a little bit skewed. So, to keep the charade going, Tom pretends to be his younger brother, Sid. So, at dinner, Silas mentions the runaway. The runaway told Silas that uh, the Duke and the Dolphin show was a con. And that night, Tom and Huck witnessed the Duke and Dolphin being run out of town on a rail. And they have been tarred and feathered. Um, Hug feels bad for them. And he says human beings can be awfully cruel to one another. And we see that kind of theme playing out through the whole story. Uh, Huck concludes that a conscience is worthless because you feel bad no matter what. And this is an example of kind of a man being tarred and feathered, what they would look like. And this is uh, a film clip from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Where he, this con man is kind of booed and thrown out of town. And that would be something of how the dolphin and the king would have been exposed. So Huck has uh, seen a black man delivering food to a shed on the Phelps property. So he wants to just steal the key and sneak Jim off. Tom berates his plan as too simplistic. And he is disappointed that there isn't security on the shed. He says they will need to create their own obstacles. Sawing through the floor, sawing through the chain, a journal written in blood. Tom says that it must be done this way because this is how it's done in the adventure books he reads. So this tells us that Tom isn't really taking the situation very seriously. He is a romantic, um, as we've seen earlier in the story. So like the Granger for Feud, Tom's ridiculous plan satirizes blind allegiance to tradition. Though Tom is just having fun, he is messing with Jim's life. And this is terrible. This is, this is something that um, he should be more thoughtful of. So his plan's ridiculous, but he says it must be done this way because that's how it's done in the adventure stories. This section is also another example of confused morality. So Tom has no problem with stealing from the Phelps home to get what he needs for his plan, but he chastises Huck for taking um, from the watermelon patch from the black who had the watermelon patch and makes him pay a dime for the melon. So he can kind of be hypocritical in that way. Um, Tom's over the top plans, the witch pie, the snakes and rats, the mystery letters lead to absolute chaos. The anonymous letters lead to a crowd of armed men taking up outside of Jim's shed and Huck and Tom help Jim escape through the hole they made in the wall. But in the escape, Tom is shot in the leg. So while Tom is excited, Huck and Jim are very worried, and Jim convinces Huck to go find a doctor while he waits. Um, when Jim sacrifices himself to stay behind with Tom, Huck makes the statement that he feels like Jim must be white inside for helping Tom. And that's 
Huck's own way of kind of humanizing Jim, even though it does sound racist, but it is a way in Huck's young mind to humanize him. Um, at first, the townspeople bring Jim back in chains, and they even talk of lynching him. But then Huck and Tom reveal the truth. Another thing Tom reveals is that Miss Watson felt badly for wanting to sell Jim, and she had freed him and him and his family in her will. Here's the terrible part. Tom knew this the whole time. He knew that Jim had been freed this whole time. So he's been playing games um, like his adventure books uh, and, and toying with Jim and, and Huck's safety. So Tom's careless treatment and lack of regard for Jim demonstrates civilized society's view towards all slaves. Um, Tom is a good person, but he doesn't treat Jim much better than a slave master would. On some level, Huck recognizes this hypocrisy, and he has witnessed the truth that Jim is a man just like any white man. And in fact, Jim's actions are much more noble than anyone else in the book. So this is highlighted by the revelation that Pap was dead, was the dead man that they found in the house. Jim hit Pap's face from Huck to spare his feelings. So he's trying to protect Huck. Um, he didn't want to see his father's face, and, and this shows that Jim truly cared for Huck. So, like I said, this is a Bildung's Roman is a type of story that is an example of a coming of age story, which means the protagonist moves from a point of naivety or immaturity to a point of awareness or maturity over the course of the novel. So, Huck's coming of age is directly related to the immorality of slavery and racism. He has been brought up to believe that slaves are not people and that it is a sin to help them. But these beliefs are challenged throughout the whole book. So, from the beginning of the book, we see Huck wrestle with moral choices, like he, sh like, should he have helped the robbers aboard the sinking ship? As he travels down river, he sees examples after example of proper members of society, and they are all either flawed examples of moral behavior, or they represent stupidity or willful ignorance. So you have the Grangerfords, you have the Sh uh, Sherburn and the Lynch mob, the Duke, um, and the ignorance of the Wilkes and the Phelps family. So, these poor examples are juxtaposed against Jim, who is supposed to be less than human, not a real man. And Jim spares Huck's feelings by, by hiding Pap's body. He worries for Huck when they are separated in the fog. He cries for his children at night, which makes Huck realize that Jim misses his children as well. He says, it don't seem natural, but I reckon it's so. Jim sacrifices himself at the end to help Tom Sawyer. So in the end, Huck decides that he is going to head out towards the Western Territories because Aunt Sally is going to adopt me and civilize me, and I can't stand it. I've been there before. So this represents Huck's coming of age. He recognizes that society's rules are hypocritical and illogical, and he'd rather, rather live independently in the West, which lacks civilization, than go back to this world. So Huck's decision all comes back to his choice aboard the raft when he tore up the letter and says, all right, then I'll go to hell. I hope that you have realized that Huckleberry Finn is a story about a young boy who learns to befriend a slave um, and sees the humanity in him and also exposes the hypocrisy of the white South and slavery. And that is it for today. Thank you.